to show you now how to do a very large Punnett square called a dihybrid cross. And this is when we're dealing with two traits instead of just one. Now remember, when we had done our Punnett squares a long, long time ago, um, we would be dealing maybe with something like hair color. And brown was dominant and blonde was recessive. So say the dad was BB, he had brown hair, and the mom was like, so we're just dealing with one trait, okay? So, you know, then we go and we fill it out, and then we figure out what the offspring was. But that's just for one trait, hair color, okay? Now we're dealing with two traits. Let me show you how that's done. Now, Mendel did this with his pea plants, and what he determined was that there were round peas in the pea pods, and some of them were wrinkled and not round. And then he also noticed that some of the peas were yellow and some of the peas were green. So he saw that uh, round tended to be dominant, okay? Dominant. So wrinkled was recessive. Then he saw that green was dominant and yellow was recessive. Okay. So these were two traits that he would see in one P. They would, some would be round and green, that would be the dominant ones. Some might be round and yellow, some may be wrinkled and green, some may be wrinkled and, and yellow, different combinations, right? Well, how do we put all of this into one big Punnett square? Well, we have to draw one big Punnett square. Okay. So, this Punnett square is going to have 16 squares in it. Yes, that's one six, 16. Seems like a lot, right? So you gotta split it into fours. Right? Okay, so here's our Punnett square. Now how do we fill it in? We're going to say that we have one P that is round and green. Okay? And this P is also, it's, it's actually going to be homozygous dominant for both. So, its genotype is going to be like so, all right? So, it, remember, you have to have two alleles, right? So, it's round, dominant, homozygous, and green, dominant, homozygous, okay? That's one parent. The other parent is going to also be homozygous, but homozygous recessive for both traits, all right? And it is going to be lowercase r, lowercase r, it is going to be wrinkled, and it's going to be yellow. So it's going to be lowercase, lowercase g. All right, so homozygous. So these are our two parents. Now we have to put them on the Punnett square. Well, how do we put all of this on the Punnett square? Remember, we're doing two traits at a time. So two alleles have to be in each square, on each top square, instead of just one. Remember, before, we would split them up and there would be a trait here and a trait over here, all right? But now, we're all split up with two different traits. Here's how we're going to do it. Remember that each parent can give one allele, so we have to figure out what those different combinations are. This parent could give this capital R here, and if it did, then it's got to give one of these. Well, guess what? It only has a capital G it can give. Okay, this, and maybe it was this one, right? This one could give this capital R and this capital G. This one could give this capital R and this capital G. And this one could give uh, this capital R and this capital G. Look at that, they're all capital R, capital G. But that makes sense because there's only capital R's and capital G's to deal with. Now, the parent um, down here that's recessive, Okay, this allele, the short, the, the wrinkled allele could go with this G or it could go with this G. 
this wrinkle diddly old here could go with this G or this G. Well, look, it's all lowercase for both, which makes sense because the parent only has lower cases to give. I know it looks complicated, guys, but it really isn't. Okay, so here's our Punnett square filled out. And as you can see, instead of having one allele from each parent meeting in a square, we're going to have two alleles from each parent meeting in a square. But putting it together is the same thing, guys. Okay, I'm going to take this marker. I think it might be a little easier. Let me make sure. Yeah. Okay, so this one is going to be capital R here, little r here, capital G here, little g here. See that? This one, capital R here, little r here, capital G here, little g here. Same thing, but you have to pay a little bit more attention because we've got more letters going on. Okay, capital R here, little r here, capital G here, little g here. Right? Because remember, each set of offspring is getting a full set of alleles, right? Okay, uh, capital R, little r, capital G, little g. You see how all these are capital R, little r, capital G, little g? Guess what? Anytime you're crossing two purebreds like this, that's what's going to happen. So I can actually just go ahead and fill out the rest of this thing. Capital R, little r, big G, little g. Whoop, big G, little g. And let's make sense. Let's double check my work. Let's pick this one to double check my work. Capital R, little r. Capital G, little g. See that? Okay. All 16 offspring from these parents are the same exact genotype. They're all capital R, little r, capital G, little g. They are all homos or heterozygous for each trait. Heterozygous for shape and heterozygous for color. The phenotype, okay? We have a dominant allele here, so it's got to be round. And again, for the color, dominant allele, so it must be green. Every offspring is round and green, but they're heterozygous for the traits.